All right, so now we have to build a side scroller script. Okay, so another script. And what should we name this one? Side, side scroller player. Remember, keep those things identified very easily so you can reference them later. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to snarf some code, aptly called snarf, because it is basically taking code from one instance and putting it into another reference. So copy it. <laughs> Isn't that a nice way of saying stealing code? All right, so here we go. Side scroller player, edit, and let's paste that into here and add one more bracket to close off that function. Okay, now we need the D key and the A key. Oops, I already had that. Nice. And instead of write, okay, no, I want write. I want translate though. There we go. That was pretty easy. See, as you get more and more uh, script out there, it will become a much easier job to start coding. You don't have to keep typing it over and over again, but the purpose of this class is to get those into position so you have them. So that's a player. Okay, and here, I have gun speed, which really doesn't relate anymore. So let's go into side scroller and go into here and say, not gun speed. Gun speed is weird. How about speed negative and speed positive? That way we can use this script over and over for any translations. There we go. All right, first off, let's see if it works. Uh, let's take the player. It's already got the side scroller and hit play. Okay, good, I can run away. Or I can face my opponent head on. And now you can see if I face my player or opponent head on, oh man, I get all these kind of weird angles going on and that's something I gotta show you how to fix. Locking a character into it. Uh, one position but okay this is what happens you know right now the enemy can see me right off the bat that's not fun that's stupid so what we have to do is develop an if statement to say well at what distance can the enemy see all right so we do that by going back to the uh, chase player script And in the chase player script, we're going to write one more if statement. Hopefully we have time for this. Uh, function update if. Vector 3. Period. Distance. Distance. Um, the enemy period position. Ah, there's enemy. See him right here? Now he's relevant. Transform period position. And then also, what I want to do is put that to a number. So, how about greater than or less than 50? Now, if I wanted to tie a variable to that, I would. And I probably will do that in the next video. Um, so, that way I can say, okay, some enemies have greater vision than the other ones. And they can see you farther. So I have this bracket, and I'm going to close it off. And congratulations, you have now wrote a 
an if statement, and you've also conquered the dreaded nested if statement with an else. See, that wasn't so bad. That's a coding nightmare right there. Okay, so what happens now? Two cubes enter. One walks up to the other cube and says, hey, you're following me. But if I get far enough away, you will stop because you don't have the distance. You don't have the sight to see my ninja ability. All right. All right. So go on to the next video.